K599, Operation Podkova, Day 74. Always a fun device to let us know they know they should be speaking Russian, and for all intents and purposes, they are. We just have a universal translator installed on our view screen. Wow, it got nerdy in here quick. We are navigating under the Arctic ice cap by dead reckoning. Fun maritime fact, dead reckoning navigation is when you only use your last known position combined with maneuvers and speed slash velocity to know where you're going and where you are. Wonder if it also has a metaphorical meaning. Konos, this loud and clear? He must be close to the back. Captain, fighting solution just to the step change to 10,000 meters. It's so insanely obvious that the AI is monitoring them and adjusting for their expectations, and yet, what are they supposed to do? They can't just ignore the phantom sub. Love the radar screen switching to the AI cluster out of focus in the background. An AI willfully destroying its own vehicle somehow makes it even more terrifying. Good evening, Mr. Hunt. It's been a long time. Just hearing Kittredge's voice gets me stoked. Vital importance to us is none of your concern. Hi, have we met? I'm Ethan Hunt, and you just explicitly told me to make it my concern. Now that's a wild heart that can't be broken right there. Of course Ethan can train a horse to be a spy. I like that he gets spotted here because it's the first thing that went through my head. If she can see it, well, yep, they can too. Most experts agree that keeping both eyes open while using a scope is proper technique, but closing one makes sense for Ilsa since she's not a classically trained sniper. Closing an eye helps the open eye focus and also the patch is keeping sand out. But none of that actually matters because the real reason Ilsa is wearing an eye patch is because Rebecca Ferguson can't wink. I know, right? Absolutely amazing. She's even more likable than she was before, which was immensely likable. There's something funny about Ethan running around with a Kalashnikov or BK-47 while Ilsa goes from her AX-308 sniper rifle with what looks like a custom suppressor to her M4A1 with the ACOG scope on it. Being disavowed never treated anyone so well. Nothing recorded, stored, or transmitted digitally can be trusted as fact. I'm sorry, so what's the issue here? That's just social media. Hey -o. When the entity breached Saudi Arabia's General Intelligence Directorate. Peter, you stay safe, cutie. Especially when dealing with a godless, stateless, a moral enemy. So true, King. When enemies have gods and states, they're so much less scary. Who the hell is this guy? That's classified. What exactly is it I'm not supposed to know about? The IMF. Mr. Kittredge. Mr. Kittredge. Well, I mean the other IMF. It adds to the IMF allure that 30, 40, 100 years later, even the current director of national intelligence doesn't know about the IMF. What does it stand for? Impossible mission force. You're not serious. And we've all thought it at one time or another. It's an intensely silly name for a super cool thing. What the hell kind of outfit? It's to choose what orders to accept. The IMF was expressly created to ensure there would be no unintended consequences. If they cannot ensure a mission's ultimate outcome, they're authorized to decline. That's the first time the whole should you choose to accept it part is explained, and it's actually very logical, even if they never seem to decline. I think we all knew that even though the vibes were telling us this was an AI asset, Ethan was gonna pop out, and that's part of the fun of Mission Impossible movies, being in on the misdirection. I understand. You're upset. The shades of their first conversation in Prague. Goodness, we've come a long way. I can understand you're very upset. Kittredge, you've never seen me very upset. Listen to me! You're dead! You stay dead! She will! Oh, no, that's... Uh, I made myself sad. But also a nod to Ethan figuring out that Jim was the big bad in the first one, giving us vital insights inside his mind. And not to De Palma's, let's say, enthusiastic use of Dutch tilts in the first film. It's gonna be a war for the last of our dwindling energy, drinkable water, breathable air. Too real, Kittredge. Just how do you plan on getting out of here? Uh, of course. <laughs> what a bumper. We're back. Movies are back. Tom Cruise, the only remaining movie star, brought us back. I mean, it was with Top Gun Maverick, but still, you have to love a franchise that sticks with the gimmick because they know we love it. Even though there are always minor spoilers in the title sequence, you can't have Mission Impossible without it. And this time, giving it that digital slicing effect as if it's all happening in the entity's mind? Also, half an hour in before the title card is something else. It's a bold strategy, Kittredge. Let's see if it pays off for him. A mind-reading, shape-shifting incarnation of chaos. I feel like the movie is finally explaining how we all feel about Ethan, and honestly, there's no one better to deliver it than Shay. Unless you have driven a wooden stake through his open heart. <laughs> what would you know about vampires, Frank Polidori? Sorry, a bit of a deep cut. Vampires versus the Bronx? Check it out. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't seen it. This very conversation is technically an act of treason. Tight, badass treason, guys. This guy! No! Not personally, but it is personal! It's always personal for Eli. Boardwalk Empire. Look, Shay is one of the best character actors alive. Learn his name. Guns. The sensible number of guns. Honestly, this would happen a lot more than we're led to believe. And I knew Cole would be the guy to try it out. Kong, Skull Island, come on, we did that one. 
Ooh, it's like she appears out of thin air, using the other guy moving quickly as a diversion to pickpocket the buyer. What a couple of buggos, am I right? Probably showing my hand here a bit, but after Maverick with Jennifer Connelly and now Haley Atwell, Tom has been reading my scripts? Hi. Hello. Top tier meet cute. With spies, it's like a confront intense. The callbacks in this one are numerous, and Ethan doing sleight of hand, sorry, illusions with the knock list 27 years ago to mess with Krieger fills me with all kinds of feels. Also, the callbacks have a meaning, and I'll get to that later. Honestly, knowing that every time my luggage was lost by an airline was to save thousands of people from a nuclear explosion makes me almost okay with never seeing my polka dot ducky print budgie smugglers ever again. See, the joke of the print is that a budgie is also a bird, and people loved it. I just never tire of low piano tension music. Even as a decoy, it's solvable. And somehow, even though I'm hyper aware that every single main character isn't about to be dusted, the tension in this scene is still terrific. And to be fair, Dunn doesn't have the strongest plot armor. Nope, I quit! Thanks for the years of trauma. World's gonna have to save itself this time. Mission unaccomplished. This mission is terminated. Get out now. No man alive can inspire the absolute terror of those words like Ethan Hunt. He's gotta be here somewhere. <laughs> who would ever expect Ethan to be running? Us, that's who. Also, let's be honest, Tom Cruise sprints like a champ. Will this thing help us find your nameless IMF man? Nothing can do that, sir. <laughs> Kittridge knows. I'm tempted to hang on a chain around Amelia's neck. Smooth and evil, sm evil. A man waiting his whole life to be noticed by a woman like you. Made that poor dude's day. Life. Kudos to this extra. Dude sold this moment with his face. Oh, I'm sad again. <gasps> no, Grace, Grace. <laughs> Chivalry isn't dead, at least in Italy. <laughs> yep. Casual reminder that Tom always does his own riding, which makes sense since Tom Cruise does look good on a motorcycle. I'm trying to help you! Grace! Hey, you stole that from John Wick, and I'm totally cool with that. The silence adds a new level of awesomeness. Killer sound design here. The ringing of the tinnitus silence shattered with the head through glass. He's not gonna shoot you. I love that quick step in front of her when the non-Americans show up after expressly saying she was safe from the other guys with guns. One thing that I love about Mission Impossible is that nobody ever thinks Ethan is as smart as he is. And yet, he's not perfect. You're driving. What? Incredible choice to start this set piece and add to the fun. Tiny lady, tremendous truck always makes me smile. People are chasing us. Yes, they are. You're driving. To be fair, it's what we all want anyway. No shame, Peggy. You're just better with shields and crap. <laughs> Come on. Who is that person? I have no idea. <laughs> Honesty. Holding hands. Hmm, I think Ethan may have been describing himself earlier. A man waiting his whole life to be noticed by a woman like you. I like the boat is one of the main three. I assume planes are just a tad too hard to come by, thus this. <laughs> Great gag, sounds electric too. It's okay. No, this car, the way they... It's okay. And she's so sweet and understanding and he can't believe he just tripped over his shoelaces in front of the sweet pretty girl. Aw, he thinks he's winning. Goes to show, no matter how much we realize that our adversary is a Professor X mixed with Mystique, mixed with Daniel Chaos, we still think we can get the upper hand. We can't. Again, it's kind of Ethan's thing to be at a disadvantage, but Paris's Titanic truck is an armored LMV, and Ethan and Grace are in Lupin's car from the castle of Cagliostro. <laughs> it's just quality slapstick. I knew she was having fun, but that much fun? He saw the entryway of their escape when he looked back. Okay, it was a killer move by Grace, but she pretty much left him to die, and just like Johnny Cash, you know she can hear that train of coming. I thought better of you, Grace, and I know you know that that's what's most important. To be fair, it's possible she didn't hear the train, and she clearly sees that Ethan is a God King spy and will definitely figure a way out. This is not staying dead, Ilsa. Go home. JK, we love you. We just want you to be safe. The only man who can't be found anyplace else in the airport except that reflection. He's being erased in real time. Nope, I quit. Wait, I already did this. Why am I still here? Died a long time ago in another life before the IMF. So that was like when you and Brad were being vamp weird with a very young Kirsten Dunst? And he knows the best way to get to me is through all of you. Ilsa out of focus in the background stings a bit. We can't be sure that was the entity. 
We can't be sure it wasn't. What if it wants you alone at that party tonight? Then I go. It is getting very Vizzini up in here and being unsure of everything isn't something I enjoy. And none of our lives can matter more than this mission. I don't accept that. How come Captain America can have that principle and he gets off scot free? Oh, wait, never mind. This is my first time in Venice. It's mine too. Dang it! Everything was fine until you both had to go and say that. Now one of you has to die. No clue which one, though. It's a mystery. Hey, look at that. The screen looks like the AI cluster. Should I know you? <laughs> it's a sick burn, but I also think Grace is genuinely asking. After her day, who could blame her? This is her go-to move, and it is genius. You die. Even for bad guys, the point works. No more snares on walls, guys. It's in the last place you would ever think to look. Not only is Ethan the greatest spy alive, he also knows Grace's M.O. at this point. They got me again! I didn't notice, which means now I have to go back and act like I did notice and point out the walls. I just can't forget to reword this win. No risk of that. Aw, that purr. It's like a kitten. Big, omniscient kitten. Provided someone dies. Her. Or her. Grace, it should be Grace. Look, Haley Atwell is a special lady, but Grace left Ethan to die and really means very little to him other than being a babe he met like a day ago. Kill Grace, do it now. But only after someone you care about dies. But either way, it's at this point that I'd take my pants off and start whipping everyone with them while singing The Reason by Hoobastank. What's that, the entity? Didn't see that one coming? That's what I thought. Bet you wish I still had my polka dot ducky print budgie smugglers now, huh? There is no place on earth where you or your god will be safe from me. I guess now we know the plot for the next one. Is that her first line? I do love the silent heavy, I suppose. Also, Paris's makeup and outfit are absolutely killer. She might be the scariest person in the room, and there's also a murdering AI with a god complex in the room, or it is the room. Pom is the best! I have to be on that train tomorrow. I know that crying on command is pretty common for actors, but Max 2.0 here is really selling me, especially since it's not so much sadness, but fear. He said run, dang it, awesome move though. Illusions, Michael. <laughs> also appropriate reaction. Dance magic, dance magic, dance magic. What, just me? That looks very unsafe, but this movie could just be Tom Cruise running in cool places, and I'd be down since he sprints like a champ. Turn right. Sorry, my mistake. I meant left. I got it left. Ethan, our comms have been breached. You're talking to the entity. Um, and here's Here where, they, where they lost me. The other movies in the series seem plausible, uh, but AI mimicking Benji's voice, not a chance. Why is Gabriel moving in reverse? Who could say? You're creeped out, I'm creeped out. We're all creeped out. Ooh, the pipe tapping on the wall, really illustrating how cramped this fight is going to be. One question that comes up is why did Grace even cross the bridge? So, a few things. First, I think she felt the inevitability of a confrontation with Gabriel. He's being led by the all-seeing eye, so a smart lady would realize there was no escape. But even more importantly is that she's surprisingly good with a blade, and even though she underestimated Gabriel, people always underestimating her puts her at a huge advantage, unfortunately not enough this time. It's an odd feeling watching her know she can match skills with Ethan when we know deep down that although she's powerful, Mantis is a big sweetie in her heart. And just two incredible fight locations happening at the same time, one with lots of wides in the open on a bridge, the other in permanent Dutch tilt in a purely claustrophobic alleyway. I mean, as far as ways to go, at least she can take the fear away. Get your mind out of the gutter. Good guy, Ethan. Which, for the record, has always been a thing for him. Zero body count. If you have to kill her off, I appreciate they make her look badass while they do it. Oh dang, brutal. The yellow dress days are behind her now. I mean, at this point, we know he volunteers for this, but you can't knock the cool shots that come out of it. Plus some dope drone work. I like that he looks sad, or at least remorseful here. I think it plays into the idea that he's genuinely a zealot following the orders of his god, regardless of whether or not he agrees with them. Cutting the sound to just score is very effective. And I couldn't think of anything sadder to end on, so that's where we're gonna end part one of part one because this movie is almost three hours long. But if all goes well, I should have part two and maybe something else next week. This, hopefully this. Thanks for your patience.